Hey guys, going on? Mike the Caveman Q here again, Paleo Problem Long Island, MikeTheCaveman.com. And today's question is, why can negative feedback loops make things super confusing? Now, I know, that was a pretty long-winded and confusing title in and of itself, but bear with me. Negative feedback mechanisms refer to a situation where the output of a pathway goes and inhibits the input of that same pathway. Yeah, that probably didn't help, did it? Basically, the end of the system tells the beginning to shut off. To give you an example, the thermostat in your house. Once you set it, it starts to sense the temperature, and if it's below the temperature you set it to, it will tell the furnace to turn on. Once the furnace raises the ambient temperature in your house to the point where you set it, well, then the thermostat tells the furnace to shut off. So there you go. Output inhibits the input. In your body, a number of physiological mechanisms are regulated by a negative feedback loop including your body temperature, your blood pressure, and a whole host of your hormone system, on top of other things. Insulin and the blood sugar roller coaster is one that I have talked about ad nauseum. But for a more in-depth example, let's look at another concept I've talked about a bunch, which would be the HPA and the HPT axes. Now, HP refers to the hypothalamus and the pituitary. The A and the T refer to the adrenals and the thyroid, respectively. In the first case, your hypothalamus releases corticotropin-releasing hormone, or CRH which then tells pituitary to secrete adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH. That in turn stimulates the adrenals to produce corticosteroids, chiefly among them cortisol, but to a lesser extent aldosterone. In the second case, your hypothalamus recognizes low levels of the thyroid hormones T3 and T4, so it releases thyrotropin-releasing hormone, or TRH. That in turn stimulates pituitary to release thyroid-stimulating hormone, or TSH, at which point the thyroid produces T4 and T3. Now, when that thyroid hormone or that cortisol from before gets sensed by the hypothalamus and the pituitary, that ends up creating a negative feedback loop turning those off to stop production so you don't overproduce your stress or thyroid hormones. Unfortunately, those two can affect each other and a third system known as the HPG axis or the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal system, the G of course referring to your gonads. In this case, the hypothalamus releases gonadotropin releasing hormone or GRH, which in turn stimulates pituitary to secrete luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, or LH and FSH. That in turn tells the gonads to produce estrogen and testosterone. The negative feedback loop link between those three is how stress can affect both your thyroid function and your reproductive function. So excess cortisol through its effects on the hypothalamus and pituitary can have downstream effects resulting in insufficient activity in either the thyroid or the gonads. So this does happen to all three, but at the risk of beating a dead horse, let's call it right there. So, after that long-winded tangent, this question originated from some friends of mine who were taking exogenous ketones, some of which believe they were retaining water, others believe they were actually gaining weight. Specifically, talking about water retention, this is something that I purposely manipulate with myself and with my fighters. Ketones are naturally diuretic through their effects on glucose and electrolyte excretion. As such, when the body senses low sodium, it increases the release of aldosterone. At which point, your body says, hey you, this uh, salt and water stuff seems kind of important. You should probably hold on to something, resulting in bloating and water retention. This is why with myself and my fires, when we're cutting weight, we make sure to stay super hydrated and salt loaded to turn down the production of aldosterone. And then in the last couple of days, we start to salt and water restrict, and the body's unable to recoup that. It's unable to turn back up aldosterone fast enough, leading to quick and easy weight loss through a water cut. Now, there's not long term, there's a short term fix, because after which your body's gonna to wanna to retain that water again. Similar to what my friends are experienced with the exogenous ketones. So the rain started to come down pretty heavy now. So to summarize this long-winded diatribe, basically your body's pretty smart. Stop trying to trick or confuse it. It'll turn on these negative feedback mechanisms in order to preserve homeostasis. Now, if you try to trick or confuse it for too long, then yeah, you can cause some damage. You can turn off those mechanisms as well. We see this with chronic stress, with excessive sugar intake and insulin resistance, we also see this with chronic anabolic steroid abuse. The biggest takeaway is to work with your body to find balance. Do not work against it. Acute intermittent stress is a good thing, whereas long chronic stress is not. So to my friends taking the exogenous ketones specifically, you wanna make sure you get in enough water and salt. That way, your thermostat is regulated. You're back to balance. It doesn't go on a roller coaster and think it has to hold onto water for dear life. Similarly, be aware of your food intake. Energy is energy, so just be aware of that. But if you wanna learn more about the importance of finding balance in your diet and in your life, take a look at this video over here.
And if you want more information on how do you stress to your advantage, take a look at this video over here. So either way, hopefully I helped you out. You know what to do. Like and subscribe down below. Share it with your friends. Head on over to Instagram and Twitter and follow me at Mike the Caveman over on Facebook at Paleo Palm Long Island. And of course, over at MikeTheCaveman.com. That being said, have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay dry. Stop tricking your body. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'm the caveman.